So today I want to read a character, just one character from the terminal. That's all I ask. How hard could it be? Welcome back friends. Today's video is inspired by a conversation I recently had with Ben during my office hours about something that seems like it should be really simple and that is reading a character, a single character from the terminal. How hard could it be? Well, it turns out that sometimes it's a little trickier than you might think depending on exactly what you're trying to do. So today I wanna to take you through a simple example and before we jump in, just a big thanks to all of you who support this channel who are getting us so close to 100,000 subscribers and people like Ben who support this channel on Patreon where you can get access to source code and office hours and there's gonna be source code in this video so without further ado let's jump into the code okay so we'll start with this simple basically empty hello world program in fact let's just yeah we can just remove the printf and let's say for this example that i have a simple task i want to read character input so input from the keyboard one character at a time and i want to do something with it right so for demonstration's sake let's say that i want to replace any letters so alphabetical letters a through z I wanna replace that with an at sign. Digits, I wanna replace with a pound sign. And anything else, any other character, I'm gonna replace with a period. So that sounds simple enough. Let's see if we can make it happen. Let's just come in here and we can declare an integer variable C. That's gonna be the character that we're reading in. And then we can make some loop like this, like while C equals get C standard in. So if you haven't seen get C, the idea is it just reads a single character and then we'll loop as long as it's not equal to EOF. Okay, so that's the end of file character or symbol or yeah, till we hit the end of the input. And of course I could have some other termination conditions. For example, I could loop until a special character Q or something gets entered, or I could loop until there's a certain number of characters. For today's purposes, that's really not the point. So this is gonna work just great. So within this basic loop structure, let's, let's add a few tests. So first of all, I wanna just come in here and see if, well, if it's an alphabetical character, so we'll use is alpha. And if it is, then we're simply going to use put C to produce a character and we'll, we'll put the little at sign here and send it to standard out. And then we'll use continue to just say, this is all I wanna do in this time through the loop. And then let's come in and we will add another test. This is gonna be for digits. So is digit. In this case, we will just put a pound sign, right? That's I think what I said I was gonna do. And then if it's anything else, we're just gonna come down here and say put C dot and then standard out. So if I gave this task to a new programmer, this is basically what I would expect to see them do as a first stab. It seems pretty straightforward, nothing too complicated, but let's see what happens when I actually run it. So before I do, I just wanna point out that I do have a simple make file here that's gonna compile my program. Again, nothing too fancy, pretty straightforward. Check out my make videos if you haven't seen make files before. But let's come down here and let's just see if it works. So, oops, I forgot to update this. You can tell that I copied this make file from a different project. Okay. Okay, so now it's gonna compile just fine. And if I come along and run it, okay, so now it's waiting for input. And now if I start typing stuff, A, B, C, D, whatever, I start just putting in a bunch of numbers and letters and then some other characters. One of the interesting things that you notice is nothing's happening, right? This is not what I expected to happen, or at least what someone that's new to this might expect to happen. You might have said, well, hey, I want to see the actual characters that I typed because that's what I'm doing, right? I've got this loop that's reading one character at a time. Shouldn't we see this output? I mean, at this point, it basically seems like my program's not working. In fact, it's going to look this way until at some point I'm coming along here and I type and I type and at some point I hit enter and then all of a sudden things start to sort of make sense. And this is the point where a lot of new programmers get really frustrated. They're like, wait, this is, this is just not what I had in mind. I really just wanted it to respond to each of my keystrokes. And this is where things get a little more complicated. And this is the point where we need to dig in a bit and try to understand what is actually going on here in our terminal. Because it might be tempting at this point to think, yeah, this is some kind of work of get C, you know, maybe it works in some way other than what I expect. You know, maybe we come down here and maybe there's something funny happening here. And of course, if I thought that, you know, I could always come down and test that out and 
do something like, you know, echo and let's add some text in here. One, two, three, four, and then, you know, some characters like that. And if I take this and I pipe it into my test program, then it's interesting you notice that the output I get is exactly what I would expect. Things seem to appear instantaneous, at least as fast as I can see it. And you're not seeing the text that I typed echoed to the screen. You're just seeing the thing that I replaced it with. So same program, but run in two slightly different ways. What's happening? Well, the culprit is actually the terminal. You see, it's collecting keyboard input and it's buffering it and echoing the characters that I type. And when it sees a new line character, then it simply pushes everything to my program. So even though I want my program to read it in one character at a time, it's pushing it a whole big batch at a time. And of course, sometimes this behavior is really helpful. I mean, it lets me correct mistakes before they get passed to input into programs. And that's great because it means that all of my programs don't have to do that. You know, that allows things like if I come in here and I type the wrong thing, I can always just delete it. And my program never actually sees that change. So if that's what I'm looking for, that's actually really, really helpful. But in this case, that's not what I'm looking for. So let's see, what do we do if we want to do something else and we actually want to see our program respond immediately? So let's see how we do that. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is come up here. I need to uh, add another include file. So we're going to include term ios.h. And this has a bunch of definitions that are going to allow us to tell the terminal to behave in a different way. Then let's come down here and let's declare a couple of new variables. These are going to be structs and it's going to be a term ios struct and we'll call it, let's say old settings and new settings. So the first one, as it's named, is going to store the existing, like the existing settings. And then the last one is going to store the ones that I, that's what I'm going to change. Okay, so if we come in here, then we can call TC get attributes. And let's say we want to change or we want to, we want to get the attributes for standard ins file number. And then let's pass in the address of old settings. Okay, so this is how it works. Basically, we're passing the address of where we want it to store the settings. So this is going to read those existing settings into old settings. And then following that, what I want to do is take new settings and basically just copy old settings over into new settings. Okay, so this basically will mean at this point we have a copy of old settings, which is now new settings. And we're going to change that just a little bit. But I basically copied it over because most of the settings are probably just fine. They're probably exactly what I want. I just want to change a few select things. And so the first one I want to do, let's just take new settings and we're going to change. We're going to access the CL flag member. And what I want to do is just take that and I'm going to turn off the canonical mode setting. Okay, so that's what they call this buffering and delayed delivery behavior. It's called canonical canonical mode. And so we can do this by changing this CL flag member variable. Now, if what I'm doing seems weird, it's because this member is a bit field. So each bit in this variable actually means something. And so if you haven't seen bit fields, please check out my video on bit fields. It may give you a little more information about what's going on. But simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and equals operator to come in here. And we're going to take the complement operator with the predefined I canon variable or constant. It's basically this is a pound defined probably somewhere. And what this is, is it's a bit mask that has a one in the right place. And so I'm just flipping those bits. So the ones are zeros, zeros are ones. And then and equals this basically turns the I canon bit to zero. Okay, so now at this point, then we can come down here and just call the, you could probably even guess the name at this point, but the TC set adder function. And we're going to call it in basically the same way, pass in standard in. There's just one more argument we pass in, which is this TCSA now constant, which basically just says, I want this these settings to take effect immediately. And then we're just going to pass in new settings. And then the only thing I want to do is I'm just going to take this and down here at the very end of our program, let's go back and set our old settings, basically restore the old settings. It's a good habit anytime you change the terminal settings to so just be in the habit of changing them back when you're done. And so at this point, I think uh, at least we, we've got something, we should see something different. We've, we've requested a behavior change from the terminal. So let's come down and see what happens when we actually run it. We will come down and make it. And then now if I run my test program, now as I start typing in, you notice now I am not getting that delayed behavior. You know, I'm getting basically just instantaneous responses. I am still getting that echoing to the screen. Now, 
In some applications, maybe that's what you actually want. Uh, let's say in this one that I don't. Maybe I, I, I don't want to see what I'm actually typing in. I just want to see the replaced characters. And of course, if that's what I want, then we could come down here and we could turn off one other bit. And that is the echo bit here. So now if I come down and let's make it again. Now if I run it, now you're going to see I can type as many numbers and characters as I want and, uh, and other punctuation marks and things like that. And you can see that it works. It doesn't echo and it responds immediately. So now I'm getting instant characters and no character echoes. So that's great. We were able to get the behavior we wanted. I have to admit, it was a bit more challenging, a little more complicated than I thought it should have been or than I think it should be to do something as simple as just get one character from the terminal and respond to it. But folks, sometimes that's just how things go, especially in computer programming. So I hope that's helpful to some of you. Some of you came looking for that. Others, I hope you learned something new about the terminal and the way input works. Now you can stop blaming your programs or the C standard library and, and put blame where it really belongs at the terminal. Please like the video, subscribe on your way out, and until next week, I'll see you later.